Happy Rosh Hashanah to all my Jewish friends. Last night was the first night of Rosh Hashanah. And a group of us had dinner with, uh, with another family. I can't say who, but a very, very brilliant husband and wife. And the husband, if I gave you his name, you'd know exactly who it is. In any event, we had a wonderful time, but we talked for many hours about many things. And then I was listening very attentively as he started to talk about Donald Trump. Now, this isn't a person who's necessarily supporting Donald Trump in any way. But this is a person who is extremely knowledgeable about these things. Not a consultant or a hanger-on or part of the donor class or anything of the kind. And he said, uh, Americans see the nation as in dire straits. Americans see the nation falling. Americans are worried about their children and their grandchildren. They're worried about the economic system under attack. They're worried about what was just done with this deal with Iran. And they're worried about, if not primarily among the top issues, is immigration. Because it involves a central tenet of the American system. The attack on the culture. The attack on the system of government. And I would add the purposeful immigration of individuals into this country to vote for people who want to fundamentally transform America. And they are, neighborhood by neighborhood, town by town, state by state, and the nation. And he was saying, while most of the other Republican candidates are candidates by the numbers, paint by the numbers, they have their economic plan, 28 points, they've got another plan, 14 points, they want to show that they're compassionate, so uh, they, 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 you know, they embrace much of the left's agenda, even though they say they don't, and they're certainly PC, they're very careful about the words they use and how they string them together and so forth and so on. Trump is none of those things. Again, this isn't a matter whether you support him or not. This is analysis, and this man was right on. He further said, not only is Trump the antithesis of this, which we already know, but he is constantly swinging for the fences. He's not interested in singles and doubles. He's swinging for the fences at every press conference, on every issue, on every media appearance, in the last debate, probably the next debate. Like Babe Ruth pointing to left field, or was it center field? Pointing to left field, I believe it was, showing that he was going to hit a home run, and he hit a home run. Again, if we'll put our biases aside and just think about what I'm saying, this is very interesting. I think it's a very, a very sharp analysis of what's going on here. And he's swinging for the fences, and the American people, many of you say, we need to swing for the fences in order to win this game and get our country back. And you're tired of the so-called polished politician. You're tired of them talking in hushed tones or monotones. This guy's different. He's not part of government. He acts and speaks like someone who agrees that the country is sinking. And he's attacking those who many of you think are responsible for it or, or who refuse to step up and do anything about it or, or have failed to step up and do anything about it in the past. Just more of the same. And he said something else that was, I thought, right on, very interesting, from an, anal from an analytical point of view. He said, as long as there's a crowded field, and there's nobody for the opposition within the Republican Party to coalesce around, if they're divided among four or five candidates, Trump's strength will likely continue. 
But if we get down to like three or four candidates, and they're able to start to coalesce around one or two, it'll become somewhat more difficult for them. At this point, 30%, 33%, 34%, that's a big number, except when there's three of you or four of you. And then the last thing he said, which I thought was incredibly wise, Trump's getting advice from friends and foes, and he's being attacked by foes because he will not conform. He will not conform to your typical candidacy. Can't you stop calling people stupid? Can't you stop talking to people about the... Can't you stop saying how rich you are? Can't you... And he said to me, once Trump stops being Trump, it's over for Trump. In other words, his point is Trump cannot take the advice of those who want him to mainstream himself. Trump cannot take the advice of those who want him to change himself. Because it's his personality, his persona, the way he talks, the way he addresses things... That's gotten where he is today. Now, I know it's frustrating as hell to the Republican establishment. I know it's frustrating as, as hell to those pseudo-conservatives who sit on their butt and don't raise a finger to, in, in, in support of activism or actually doing anything. And I know it's frustrating as hell for other candidates. And it's frustrating as hell to many of you, perhaps. But this is what he needs to do to separate himself from the pack, good, bad, or ugly. It may not be your cup of tea, but it's the cup of tea of some people, obviously. Now, that's not to say that there wouldn't be some unpredictable catastrophe in his campaign. I don't know what it would be because it's unpredictable. But he, he, he will certainly fail, remarkably enough, if he follows the advice of the experts. He will certainly fail if he becomes one of 16 and changes who he is. So that may annoy a lot of people, but that happens to be his strength. Or he wouldn't be where he is today. A significant percentage of the Republican Party, certainly much of the conservative base, is completely turned off with the Republican Party. Now I've talked about this for years now. This is not a surprise to those of you who have listened to this program. And I've been bare-knuckled about this, whereas others have uh, tap-danced all around it. Mitch McConnell and John Boehner have been the worst possible so-called leaders the Republican Party could possibly have at a time like this, where we are confronting a lawless president. And the American people, more and more, are deeply concerned about what's going on. And they cannot rely on a quote-unquote loyal opposition in the Republican Party to fight this. Now, John Kasich, I will play some of the clips for him. John Kasich is moving further and further left. He's actually the Rockefeller Republican in this race, even though he'll point to his conservatism as a congressman, his conservatism as a governor. None of that matters. He's telling us today what he would do as president of the United States. He's never been president of the United States. Chris Christie is lurching to the right, but it's too late in my view. He's already exposed himself. Jeb Bush had as a policy initiative, before Trump got into this race, to run to the left of the conservative base. Remember, he met with John McCain, and he said he's basically going to run a general campaign in the Republican primary. And he blew off the conservative base. Now he can't stop talking enough about his conservative credentials as the Florida governor. But here's the thing analysts are missing. And was pointed out to me last night, here's the thing even our friends George Will and Krautheimer and others are missing. We're so upset because Trump's not a conservative. Trump's not a conservative. None of these Republican establishment types of conservatives. McConnell, Boehner, Bush, Romney, McCain. None of them. But the issue, the issue, the central issue to most people who are concerned right now is the survival of the country vis-a-vis -vis the left 
the survival of the country. Whether it's our economic system, jobs and wealth creation, capitalism and so forth. Whether it's our culture. Whether it's our language. Whether it's our constitution. Obama has lit fuses everywhere. He's thrown political hand grenades everywhere. The Republicans are impotent. The Republicans are telling us they're not going to do anything about it. They can't do anything about it. Their surrogates are on TV trashing the Tea Party, trashing conservatives. They were going after Ted Cruz. They were going after Rand Paul. They were going after anybody who would stand up to them. And now this guy, who may not be a down-the-line conservative, is standing up to them. And he's kicking them all over the place. They're completely confounded. So we don't need lectures from so-called conservatives who were perfectly happy with Mitch McConnell, like the Wall Street Journal editorial page, which is a joke. Perfectly happy with John Boehner, who wanted Jeb Bush and want him to be the nominee, and before that, Romney, and so forth and so on. They're not conservatives. And today they pretend to defend the purity of conservatism when they don't. They're funding the entire Obama agenda. And so when a guy gets up in plain English, says, look, I've never been involved in these, you know, in these, uh, these decisions. I'm a successful businessman. I'm a wildly successful businessman. He says it without apology. When Obama was attacking people for success, saying, look, you didn't earn your own success, this guy sets, stands up and says, hey, I'm successful, and I'm worth $10 billion. But, whoa, listen to that guy. He's not afraid to say he's in the one one thousandth percent of the income earners. Or when he says a lot of immigrants are coming into this country illegally and legally, who don't love the country, who are criminals. Whoa, this guy actually said that. And what his critics want you to hear is, yeah, but he once supported single payer. And he once supported this and he once supported that. Well, he says today he's opposed to Obamacare, and the Republican Party obviously supports it. They have funded every penny of it. I'm not endorsing Trump. I'm not endorsing anybody. I am addressing, I'm addressing this remarkable event during this election cycle. I don't know what's going to happen to Trump or any of the other candidates. I'm not Nostradamus. But there's a reason why, at least for now, he is where he is. And also notice one other thing, that these entrenched Republican ruling class types, they not only attack him, they attack us. The Wall Street Journal editorial page, this guy, Brent Stevens, this little puke, this punk, viciously attack. oh, anybody who supports him, oh, I see, okay, great. Just attacking people. And you see it across the board. They don't get it. They don't get it. And let me tell you something. We the people are upset and frustrated for the right reason. Because our country is going to hell. And the political class is pushing it there. There's no need for this to be taking place. There's no reason our military is being hollowed out. There's no reason we don't have a secure border. There's no reason that we give welfare benefits to anybody who comes across the border into this country. There's no reason we have to nationalize our local police departments. There's no reason we should give up the world to the Islamo-Nazis, the Russians, and the Chinese who are on the move while we're doing nothing. There's no reason you and I have to pay with our hard-earned tax dollars, Planned Parenthood, to butcher little babies. There's no reason for that. And when Mitch McConnell and the others say they're not going to fight it, they're not going to fight it. They're not going to use the power of the purse. When they say they're not going to fight the Iran deal, when they surrender the treaty clause of the Constitution, we don't want to hear from the talking points Republicans anymore. I'll be right back. Mark Levin. <laughs> 